What is up guys? We are back with another video and as you can see we're taking a look at an air cooler today and when it comes to air coolers there are three main things that I really consider or like just the top three things that I'm looking for when it comes to an air cooler. Number one is cooling performance. So obviously with any CPU cooler you want good cooling performance. Secondly is ease of installation. So a lot of these coolers, you have to like remove your motherboard from your case and it takes a long time to really install these. So we want something that's easy to install. And then thirdly is noise levels. So if you have a uh, stock cooler, you know about noise levels, you know if you put full load on your CPU that that uh, CPU cooler is going to sound like a jet engine and we don't want that either. And I think this cooler checks all of those boxes. This is Deepcool's AS500. So let's go ahead and take a look. Taking a first look here at the AS500, it is a single tower cooler. Um, so we have a single heat sink stack. And for those wondering about dimensions, the total height of the cooler is 164 millimeters. Definitely keep that in mind because there are a lot of cases that will only support say like 155, 160, and you don't want to run into any clearance issues. Pre-installed on the front of the cooler is Deepcool's own TF140S 140 millimeter cooling fan. This is an FDB bearing fan that has fan speeds between 500 and 1200 RPM with a max airflow of 70.81 CFM and max noise level of 29.2 dBA. Taking a look at the cooler from the side here, we can see just how thin it is. With the fan attached, it's only 75 millimeters thin, and that means that you're not gonna have any clearance issues when it comes to memory. The fan itself is not gonna hang over your memory. You won't run into any issues with VRM heat sinks. It's very nice and thin and compact. The top of the cooler itself has just this black cap on it. Um, of course, this is what's gonna show out if you have a, um, a window on your system. And there's no deep cool logo or anything like that, but there is some ARGB lighting with this kind of clear diffuser. We'll go ahead and show you guys that here in just a little bit. As we move along to the back of the cooler, we can get a better look at the heat sink design itself. This is an aluminum heat sink design with 56 total fins and more than enough room between each fin so we have good airflow going through the cooler. Coming up from the bottom of the cooler, we have five six millimeter thick nickel plated copper heat pipes. These heat pipes go up into the heat sink stack in sort of a U fashion, which is pretty common when it comes to tower coolers. These heat pipes, of course, are taking that heat and bringing it up into the heat sink so that the fan can, of course, exhaust all of that heat out of your system. The base of the cooler is also nickel plated copper. And while we definitely can see machining marks on the base, if you actually touch it, it has a very smooth feel. So we should have very good contact with our CPU. Getting the AS500 installed is quite easy. Now our installation is going to be on a B550 motherboard. So these installation instructions are for AM4. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the brackets on each side of your CPU socket. Now don't remove the back plate that came with your motherboard because we're gonna need it. With the AM4 brackets removed and the back plate still in place, we need to secure it. So to do that, we take the large screws that have spacers on them and screw them into the back plate, securing it to the back of the motherboard. Next, go ahead and take the included AMD mounting brackets and install them using the included thumb screws. Now go ahead and apply the included thermal paste, remove the fan from the cooler, and then with just the heatsink, carefully place it on top of your CPU, lining up the screws with the brackets you just installed. Now secure the cooler by tightening the screws on each side. Now all you have to do is reinstall your fan, connect it to the CPU fan header on your motherboard, and either connect the RGB cable to your motherboard or the included controller. With everything installed, you can see we have more than enough room for memory clearance and there are not any clearance issues whatsoever. 
we decided to connect the ARGB connection to the header on our motherboard and it worked perfect with ASRock's Polychrome Sync software. The RGB lighting is nice and subtle and it's just, just adds just a little bit of flair to the inside of your case. When it comes to testing, we've completely redone our CPU test bench. So we have a 3900X on there and we don't have a whole lot of other coolers to test against. So we just directly compared to the AMD Wraith Prism RGB CPU cooler. This is the stock CPU cooler that will come with that 3900X. It would give it a good comparison considering a lot of people will have that cooler and they're thinking about upgrading. Now our idle tests are taken on the Windows 10 desktop, um, running loaded into Windows for one hour. And then our load test is taken on, uh, we run A to 64 system stability tests for one hour with CPU checked and we record the highest temperature throughout that test. Same thing with the noise levels. When it's all said and done, I think that Deepcool has a really good CPU cooler here in their AS500. You know, at the beginning of this video, I said there are three main things that a, a air cooler needs, which was thermal performance, ease of installation, and noise levels. And I think that this cooler checks all of those boxes. When it comes to thermal performance, we saw really good results against the stock AMD cooler that comes with the 3900X, about a 10 degree difference um, in load performance, which is really good. Um, and then when it comes to noise, this thing does not sound like the stock AMD cooler. The stock AMD cooler sounds like a jet engine about to take off when you put full load on it. This just, you can barely hear it. The noise levels are really good on this and that's thanks to that 140 millimeter cooling fan. When it comes to installation, this is one of the easiest CPU coolers that I've installed, easiest air coolers. Um, you do have to remove the mounting brackets for AM4 or your AM4 mounting brackets, but you still keep the back plate on your motherboard. Um, you could install this while you have your system installed in a case. It's that easy and it's very thin and small. So you don't, you know, even if you have big hands or you're working in a smaller case, you shouldn't have issues when it comes to installation. Um, and with this cooler, as we talked about, it's very, very thin. So you have zero interference with memory or, you know, VRM heat sinks or anything like that. It's just, just a nice small cooler. And it, because it's so small, I'm actually pretty impressed by the thermal performance because we do see very thin tower coolers that don't do a whole lot when it comes to performance. But this cooler did a really good job. And then on top of that, you do have that ARGB strip at the top, just some nice little RGB lighting to add just a little flare to the inside of your case. And what's nice about this is that it does come with cables for all motherboards. Um, it will work with all motherboard RGB software, but if you don't have an ARGB header on your motherboard, you have an older motherboard, um, they do include a controller, which is nice. Um, so you get the controller included with the cooler. So just another little nice little add on there. Um, so yeah, I really like this cooler. It's selling for $59.99, which I feel is a very fair price for the performance. And you know, you get that RGB controller and ease of installation, everything like that. I think the price is very fair as well. Now, if you have any questions about this cooler, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.